Welcome back to Savage Kitchen. It's been a little while since we've done a tasting video, uh, and I promised a couple weeks back in my Bitter and Twisted that we would do a Campari versus Aperol tasting. So that's what we're doing today. I have a Campari, which clearly I'm a little bit familiar with. I have used in cocktails and do enjoy. Um, and we have a bottle of Aperol, which I am actually not at all familiar with. I've probably had it in a cocktail at some point or another. Um, I know that the Aperol Spritz is wildly popular. Um, and I know that some people think that you can sub one for the other uh, because they're both Italian aperitifs, uh, but I don't think you can. So we're gonna do a tasting and figure it out. Um, I, because I'm a nerd and I like to do research, I have been uh, reading a bit about the history of both of these brands. Interestingly, they are both owned by the same group and produced by the same group now. However, in the beginning, Campari, uh, which was created sometime around 1860 uh, by a man named Campari, and I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Campari, and that's all that's really important. Um, so he invented this around 1860 as an Italian aperitif, and uh, the recipe has pretty much remained the same since the 1860s, and of course, with all of these herbal liqueurs, it's super top secret. They won't release the recipe. Um, all we know is that it used to get its bright red color from cochineal bugs, and uh, which like, don't freak out, like bug shells were used as food dye from like the beginning of time. Um, and uh, they stopped doing that in mm, recent history. I wanna say like since the 2000s, because uh, people were all up in arms about it. Okay, um, Aperol, from what I understand, um, I'm not sure where they get their slightly different red color from. So many people have described this as an orange color and uh, that doesn't look orange to me. So uh, maybe check your color acuity. In fact, there is orange on this label. Mm, I don't know, that doesn't look orange to me. It looks like hot pink. Anyway, um, in tasting Campari on its own, this is, uh, it's bitter. I think Campari is known for being bitter. It's known for being uh, the base of a Negroni, an Americano, a Boulevardier. Um, but it doesn't, it's not that it's just bitter. It does have some sweetness to it. And it, nothing quite smells like Campari. I actually think it smells amazing but not in a, like, it reminds me of like a grandmother's attic, which probably sounds super weird, um, but it does. It reminds me of a grandmother's attic uh, in a lovely way. Let's taste this before I get too nostalgic, shall we? And so ABV on this is, I believe, somewhere, uh, it's 24% alcohol by volume here in the States. It does vary country to country, uh, but here in the States, 24%. And to smell this, aside from grandmother's attic, which does that mean malt balls? Does this smell like malt balls? Mm, yeah, but it also smells like... <sighs> So citrus, when you think of citrus, you think sweet, right? But when you think of the rind of citrus and the pith between the outer skin and the fruit inside, there's bitterness. And I think that this has that uh, scent to it uh, when you think of citrus. Let's give this a taste. Mm -hmm. All right, fair warning, this is not it's a liqueur, but I think a lot of people associate liqueur with sweet. And this does have sweetness to it, but overwhelmingly uh, the dominant sensation is bitterness. But it's kind of great bitterness. I know people who drink this straight. Mm, that might be, a, I think it's a little much. I enjoy sipping this as a taste. I don't know that I would go to a bar and order just, you know, Campari on the rocks. More power to you if you do. But, um, whew, that's, that's a lot. Um, you definitely, so like I said, the overwhelming sensation is bitterness, but there is so much sweetness that accompanies it. And that thought of like the, 
the bitter part of the rind, the bitter part of an orange is what you taste here. Interestingly, in my research, uh, since I did, uh, you know, super secret recipe, however, it's thought that there is a particular bitter orange that grows in Southern France and Italy and Campari was uh, invented in Milan, so Northern Italy, uh, that is believed to be part of this recipe. And it just makes sense. There's, there's definitely some citrus along with all kinds of other herbs. It's very herbaceous. Um, yeah, this real good. Mm. It's real bitter though. I almost feel like to people that don't like Negronis, I almost feel like you should try it on your own because I think that so in Negroni, you have Campari, you have gin, and you have vermouth. And if you, depending on what your feelings of gin might be, adding Campari to it might be a bit much. I feel like you should try Campari on its own because there are other ways that you can manipulate this spirit and you might enjoy it. Um, all right, let's put this on hold for a second and let's, let's dive into Aperol. Brand new bottle that I've never tried. Also, I feel like I need like a, hold on. I got a little Pellegrino here. I might need a little palate cleanse because I mean, it's real serious. It's very, very bitter. Mm. Okay. All right, let us then, ooh. Okay, to smell this immediately, it is far more citrus forward, a uh, sweet citrus. This smells like I instantly identify oranges where in smelling the Campari, I identify citrus, but not necessarily orange. This smells like, hmm, this smells like delicious oranges. Wow. Okay. ABV on this, however, is half that of Campari. So this is a much lower alcohol by volume spirit. Uh, than the Campari. So if you're looking for a lighter drink, you want to have like a low ABV sipper to have by the pool for the day, Aperol might be the way to go. Hence the Aperol spritz, I'm sure. All right, let's try this. Okay. Mm. It just, it does, it smells it smells like oranges. It smells light. It smells a little bit floral, a little bit like orange blossoms. Um, <sighs> doesn't smell nearly as herbaceous as the Campari does. Um, and supposedly Aperol does have some rhubarb in the recipe, which would sweeten this up even more. Sugar content between the two, between the Aperol and between the Campari is the same. Um, oh, it smells really good. Let's taste it. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh my God. That's like candy, especially after sipping the Campari. Wow. Oh, wow. Mm. Damn. Okay. I had a friend mention to me, I was asking her about this. I was telling her, oh, I'm going to do a Campari versus Aperol. Uh, and her take on this is that Aperol is much, has a nutty flavor compared to Campari. And I would say, I don't know that I would have instantly identified it if not for her suggestion, but I do think it's there. It's definitely, it's way more mellow. It is somewhat bitter, but tasting it on the heels of the Campari might not be doing my palate justice. Um, compared to the Campari, 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 I'm all over the place with pronunciation. Sue me. Um, it is far less bitter. Wow. Mm. I can see why uh, Aperol spritzes are such a big thing. This begs for a little bit of effervescence. It's very light. Mm. I can't imagine using them as a one-to-one -one substitute though. So starting out, we talked about how some people think that you can sub Aperol for Campari and vice versa. They're incredibly different. I wouldn't. I think the only thing that is similar between them is that they are both from Italy. Uh, they both have super secret recipes uh, and they're red. I think the similarity um, really ends there. They are both aperitifs. They both have a bitter element, but on the scale of bitter, 
if Campari is a 10, Aperol is like a five. Like it's really different. Um, you know what? I'm curious. I'm going to, let's put together a little bit of a, so an Aperol spritz technically is a Prosecco, two parts Prosecco, one part Aperol and a splash of club soda. I don't have any Prosecco on me, but I do have a little bit of soda, Pellegrino. So let's try, oh, hold on. I'm going to get a couple glasses and we're going to just mix up a little bit of Aperol with some soda and juice. I have some grapefruit juice. Um, and Campari with soda, uh, same thing. And I think that they are going to be very, very different. Uh, but let's see, you know, for all my bitching about color and about how Aperol wasn't really, uh, orange <laughs> when you have them poured in the glass, the Aperol actually does look much more orange. So my bad, um, something about it in the bottle though, it just looks very red. So I think what we're going to do here, waste not, want not, let's put our Aperol and we're gonna let's put just a little bit more in there i don't know that's probably we're really playing fast and loose that's probably about an ounce of aperol and we're gonna do the same thing with our campari it's just so pretty all right let's get this okay i might have gone a little heavy on the campari let's even this out this is why you measure things quite honestly Okay, so I put together two little versions of a spritz. One is Campari, one is Aperol. The color difference is dramatic. Uh, and in each of these, it's about an ounce, again, playing kind of fast and loose with measurements, of spirit, and then about an ounce of grapefruit juice, maybe a little bit less, and then topped it off with soda. So since the Campari was so much bolder of a flavor, I want to start with the Aperol to taste. It smells so good. Mm. Oh my God. <sighs> well, that's what I'm going to drink for the rest of the summer. Jesus, that's good. Oh, it's just light, refreshing. I actually think it could use a touch more Aperol. The Aperol um, it's just not that bold. Campari is very bold. The Aperol is not nearly as bold. Um, I think it could use a touch more Campari. I'm sorry, Aperol. Oh yeah, that's delicious. It's also, it's not sweet. If you really want a sweet drink, uh, you're going to want to either add some syrup to that, uh, more juice, maybe a little bit of lemon juice, uh, to brighten it up, but I like it as is delicious. All right, let's taste our uh, Campari, grapefruit juice, and uh, Pellegrino. Mm. That's good too. If I didn't like Campari though, I wouldn't like this. Um, it doesn't transform in the same way the Aperol did with the grapefruit juice and the soda. And you know, I mean, I like it because I like Campari and I could drink Pellegrino by the case. Um, but I don't know, I don't think this is the right use for Campari. I think Campari is a bit heavier of a spirit, um, and it's great in a stirred down cocktail like the Negroni, the, uh, Campari gin and sweet vermouth. I think that is sort of the perfect vehicle for it or my very own bitter and twisted, which was, uh, Campari grapefruit juice and thyme syrup and something like this. Let's add a little lemon juice. Let's see. Which is basically just cheating at this point. It's like putting salt on a dish that you don't like that much. Yeah. Compared to, compared to this, this wins in this format as a spritz. If I want a more, I don't want to say serious, but like a more booze forward cocktail, I'm going for Campari mixed with other spirits. If I want something light and refreshing and fun, I'm going for the Aperol with some soda and some juice. Oh, this is really good. Mm. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in and joining me on my little Campari versus Aperol adventure. If you have any comments uh, or questions, leave them below. I love chatting back and forth with you guys. 
Uh, let me know if there's anything you want to see me make with these uh, two ingredients. And I'll see you next time. Cheers, friends. Thank you.